Hello, I'm Lloyd Bonson and you join me today at Alton Park where, as you can see, we have a fantastic turnout for rounds 10, 11 and 12 of the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup. On pole position for the first race is Luke Herbert. Luke is currently second in the championship and will be looking to take every opportunity to close the championship lead. Luke, it's going to be exciting out there and very close. Yeah, um, I mean, my main rival, Tom Roach, is in P9. You know, I've managed to put it on P1 first time this year, so... Um, I've got to think about the championship, but at the same time, I haven't had a win yet. So um, I think people think I'm going to try and play it safe, but I'm not. I'm going out there for the outright win. I think about the championship later in the year. And, and certainly being so far ahead of Tom on the grid, that gives you a little bit more breathing space, I'm sure. Yeah, it does. But, the, you know, I mean, between me, me, um, Steve and Jack, it's, you know, the, the times in qualifying were so close, less than a tenth, that, that it's a breathing space to Tom, but it's still going to be as exciting and hard, hard work. It's going to be a tough race. A lot of uh, sunshine out there. The heat's building up. It's going to be tough in the car. Yeah, I mean, um, my quick slap in qualifying was on lap two and three. Um, so, you know, 20 minutes flat out. The, the tyres are going to be squelched. It's, going to be, it's all going to be about tyre management if I can get in front, not push too hard, try and maintain a gap, and uh, ultimately win the race. Fantastic. Well, good luck, Luke. The sun is out. The sky is blue. For the rest of the grid, Andy McEwen, it's over to you. Well, thank you very much, Lloyd, and it is indeed beautiful conditions here at Alton Park. Here is how the championship standings look arriving here. Just eight points separate Tom Roach and Mr Consistency, Luke Herbert, in second place. That really is developing into the fight for the championship. Liam Murphy in third place, 35 points back, still in contention, but needs some good results here this weekend. Well, he has got a fairly favourable grid position. He's right there at the sharp end. It's Luke Herbert with Steve Roberts on the front row. That's Steve's best qualifying of the year so far. Jack Harding has got Liam Murphy alongside him on row two with Johnny Greensmith and Ben Short, row three. Reigning champ James Blake Baldwin has Brian Chandler alongside him on the fourth row. Tom Roach, championship leader, down in ninth on the grid alongside Jake Bailey on the fifth row. Mike Comber and Adam Bessel, row six. Aidan Hills, Nick Dunn, row seven. With Nathan Ballingary Townsend on the eighth row. Carl Garnett is inside the top ten in the points, but he's on row nine of the grid. Mark Holmes improving as well. He's on the tenth row as uh, the entire field scrolls through. A huge grid of cars here. Will Sharp making his debut in the championship and they work their way all the way down towards the back of what is a 35 car grid which is uh, tailed by Brett Jones in the number 55 car so Luke Herbert then second in the points only eight points behind Tom Roach and with Tom Roach back in the pack this is Herbert's chance to try and take the championship lead the red lights go out now and away we go for the first time of asking here at Alton Park who makes the start from the front row of the grid the blue car on the left is Herbert the black car on the right is Roberts and the blue and white on the inside is Jack Harding who's charging past the pair of them to take the race lead in towards Old Hall Corner great start from him there is the green Blendini car of Tom Roach Brian Chandler's on the grass but he's not the only one Jeff Gurrier will several cars further back go grass tracking but I think they all keep it pointing in the right direction down towards Cascades and yes Harding has the lead brilliant stuff Greensmith there in second place with Liam Murphy trying to challenge around the outside for third the two blue cars together Steve Roberts has been demoted down to fifth after his great qualifying effort in uh, second place on the grid down towards Ireland Bend they go Murphy on the outside there he's on the grass oh so too Steve Roberts they're both off oh what a shame for two drivers who were desperately in need of a good result Roberts has exited stage right he's in the gravel Murphy rejoins just behind Tom Roach who puts him in sixth position so he just about got away with that but he has lost some ground Roach meanwhile has had a great start hasn't he he wasn't that high up through the first corner but through Cascades and Ireland he's been able to pick them off one by one and he's into the top five Then Short there is in behind that pair as they head over Hilltop for the first time but it's Harding leading the way Greensmith is second Luke Herbert is there in third place and challenging down the hill race leader has to defend Herbert snatches a break but he can't make the move stick on the way into the right and left at his lops and then the very tricky off camber right hander at Nickerbrook Corner which uh, sets them up for the long run up Clay Hill through they go. That car in fourth place is James Blake Baldwin, by the way. That's not his usual car. He's in one of the uh, Blink Motorsport cars this weekend and straight on the pace in it. Fourth place at the moment for the reigning champion. Up towards Drew as we go. Now, this isn't really an overtaking opportunity, but it's all about getting a good exit from here and trying to challenge on the run down towards Lodge Corner. Out they go. Harding didn't get a brilliant run there, though, so Greensmith is right on his tail now, and it's Luke Herbert in third who ducks to the outside line because he's under no real pressure from the cars behind, so he can afford to duck and dive this way and a little bit more. There's Roach in fifth, Murphy in sixth place, Ben Short is there in seventh and that is really the leading contingent. So seven cars for the race lead as we come across the start finish line for the first time of asking. Harding has the lead but Green
Greensmith's found a gap on the inside. Johnny Greensmith going for the race lead and he's gone through. Brilliant move that was from Johnny Greensmith. He just about found room on the inside line. He's a bit wide on the exit though. Harding coming back at him now down the avenue. Wheel to wheel for the lead and Herbert almost making it three wide. This won't work. Someone has to back out of it. Who came out on top? It's still side by side with Harding clinging onto the race lead around the outside. Can he hold on all the way? They're still together. Brilliant racing this is and they're all back with each other now because we've got uh, uh, James Blake Baldwin there joining in the fun as well in fourth but Greensmith will go through so Johnny Greensmith your new race leader Jack Harding will try now to slot back in line in second place which he cannot do because Luke Herbert is still to his outside I think on the exit of the shell here but he will be in second Herbert third Blake Baldwin fourth Roach is fifth with Murphy now down to sixth after his first lap moment and Ben Short still seventh Wow, well, they've really kicked things off in fantastic fashion here. One and a half laps completed and drama all the way in the Master MX5 Super Cup. And we already have our first lead change. That won't be the last one, though, I don't think. Johnny Greensmith heads the field now down towards the Hislop chicane. Hard on the brakes he goes. Second place is still the number 43 machine there of Jack Harding, who, if it weren't for some penalties last time out at Silverstone, would be right in this championship equation. It's a real shame that uh, those penalties have knocked him outside the top 10 in points. And really now the rest of his season is just about trying to rack up the race wins, gain experience and possibly look towards a championship challenge next year. Up and over Clay Hill towards the double apex right-hander at Druids they go. And then down towards Lodge Corner where we didn't see any moves made in the lead group on the previous lap. Will we see any this time? Again, Harding not brilliant out of Druids, is he? Greensmith just gapped him slightly. And I don't think Jack's under huge pressure here from Luke Herbert. They all stay single file on this occasion. Turn through the right-hander, down through the dip and up and over Deers Leap to complete another lap from Dicing Further Bat. That was Ben Short trying to get himself alongside Liam Murphy. And in fact, they're all stacking up behind James Blake Baldwin, who's got his sparring partner from last year alongside him, Tom Roach. Ah, and Roach goes through, but so do Murphy, Short and everybody else. So I think that uh, Blake Baldwin, possibly there, has run into some mechanical difficulties. Oh, what a shame. Well, he's not in his usual car, and uh, perhaps that's what you expect when you go into a car that you're not used to. There could just be a few underlying gremlins and uh, Blake Baldwin, unfortunately, they have uh, taken him out of the equation pretty early on in this first race. And, of course, the grid for race two is based upon the result from this race, which means he'll have to start right from the back of the grid. So he's going to be one to watch in the uh, second race of the weekend. They're running well, by the way. The number 14 car is Jake Bailey having a really good run uh, with Blake Baldwin's demise. That promotes him now into seventh position. So Jake Bailey right amongst the leaders. And uh, in behind him is Mike Comba, who's also having a pretty good run, it must be said. And then Aidan Hills, I think, in the orange number 80 car is in behind him. Back down towards the British K. Now, that little moment there has just allowed the top three to make a small, very small break over Tom Roach. But Tom is working his way through the field in typical Tom Roach fashion here. Slowly but surely and very assuredly, he's moved his way into fourth position now. A little bit of a dent in the front of his car, maybe, where he's got a bit close for comfort with someone. But that is par for the course, really. When you're running in the midfield, a bit of contact there between Luke Herbert and Jack Harding. Herbert tried to go the inside into Nick and Brook, but that's very difficult to do. There's a big tyre stack on the apex there to uh, dissuade the drivers from corner cutting and if you try to go up the inside of someone you very often get forced into that tyre stack and it can do a lot of damage that's held Luke Herbert up and so that little gap that he did enjoy that I just mentioned over Tom Roach in fourth has pretty much evaporated completely. Leaders back down towards Lodge Corner again Herbert just weaving to the inside considering possibly having to defend there from Tom Roach but Tom stays in his wheel tracks for the time being. So, things, dare I say it, just calming down for the time being with Johnny Greensmith holding on to the race lead. And will he feel the need to defend down into Old Hall Corner? I don't think he will. This is the biggest lead that anyone's had so far in this race. The battle really is for second now between Harding and, well, everybody else it seems. Harding and Herbert initially, but then Roach Murphy right in behind too. There's Mike Conn further back, just running two wheels on the grass. And Carl Garnett, I think, has spotted there. He got himself ahead of Aidan Hills, so Carl Garnett moving his way through nicely. Carl is ninth place in the points coming into this meeting, having by far his best season so far in his uh, MX5 Super Cup career. Great to see some drivers who have been sticking at this now for several years finally starting to get the results that they've been looking for, getting inside the top ten on a regular basis. Carl Garnett, definitely one of those drivers. Richard Wickland, another one, of course, and he's uh, been... Um, right in the mix all season long really but uh, Richard is uh, not here this weekend not featuring inside the top 10 as we usually would see but we have plenty of other drivers in the championship this year who can score top 10s and score race wins that's what makes it so much fun to watch down towards Drew as we come and Johnny Greensmith who 
a lap or so ago had that nice little break, didn't he, over Luke Herbert, over Jack Harding in second place. Well, he's now got Luke Herbert all over him. So Luke Herbert has found a way into second and now he's going for the race lead. He's up the inside line, he goes through. Can Harding follow him? No, not quite. So Luke Herbert now uh, takes over the race lead. It's taken him about half the race to get there, uh, but he's finally got back to the front. Side by side for fourth place further back, meanwhile, as Liam Murphy tries to find a way back past Tom Roach. Green Smith's going back at Herbert for the race lead. We'll focus on that first because they're side by side into the corner. Herbert on the inside. May run a bit wide on the exit of the corner. Let's see. Meanwhile, Murphy has gone fourth, and he does run wide on the exit, but Roach can't go through. So, new leader, Luke Herbert. New fourth place man is Liam Murphy, but the battle still rages on down towards Cascades. Herbert on the inside, Greensmith on the outside. And as they make their way down Lakeside Straight, it's still just as close as ever. Down towards Ireland they go. Towards the shell hair, but a possible overtaking opportunity with the uh, banking there at the shell hair. Means you can carry a lot more speed into the corner than you think you can. Steve Roberts' car there still sat disconsolately in the uh, gravel trap, two drivers right. Back out of the hairpin they go and in towards the Britain chicane. Flick it left, right, left. Use an awful lot of curb through there, but again, avoid the tyre stack that's just to the right of the middle apex. But it's dirt on the road there as someone's been grass tracking earlier on, but Herbert it is who has got himself back into the race lead and Jack Harding is now challenging for second place around the outside down towards the Hislop chicane and I don't think that was going to work because he was probably on the wrong side of the road but you can go around the outside there and get the inside for the left hander. The racing though absolutely phenomenal here at Alton Park. Hello and welcome back to Alton Park where Luke Herbert is potentially less than a lap away now from his first win in Mazda MX-5 Super Cup. He's really had to work for it though, got demoted down to third from pole position earlier on. But now the blue number 50 is out in front and pulling away from Jack Harding who is in second position now. He's found a way past Steve Roberts whilst we were away. Up and over Clay Hill they go. That is the order inside the top three then. Herbert from Harding from Roberts in third. He is coming under pressure though from Liam Murphy who's trying to find a way onto the podium and with Tom Roach. Uh, down the order a little way it's going to jumble things up at the top of the table because this win will put Luke Herbert into the lead of the championship he was only 8 points behind Roach coming into this race and this will reverse things slightly so down towards Lodge they come, out of Lodge they go and Luke Herbert will see the chequered flag for the first time in the Master MX-5 Super Cup. Luke Herbert wins race one here at Alton Park. Jack Harding is second. Greensmith just about hangs on to third position with Liam Murphy in fourth. Fifth for Tom Roach. Ben Short was sixth. And Mike Comber was in seventh place. Jake Bailey, meanwhile, had dramas late on and was unfortunately a late retirement. Confirmation of the result then. Herbert Harding, Greensmith, Murphy and Roach the top five with Ben Short sixth, Mike Comber seventh, Carl Garnett another top ten, Sam Tatler and Aidan Hills rounding out the top ten. Brian Chandler was knocked down to 11th earlier on. Others to pick out. Adam Bessel there in 14th place. Steve Roberts was down in 19th after his off at the start. And... Uh, Mark Home there, 23rd. Will Sharp, 26th on his debut in the Championship. Jake Bailey, Duncan Harris and James Blake Baldwin, the three retirements. Luke, when we spoke to you before the race, you said you were looking for a win and uh, here you are. Fantastic victory. Yeah, this wasn't the easiest race. Um, missed second gear off the line, so my mistake. But the car was set up perfectly, you know. It came on straight away and was good to the last three laps. Um, dropped back to third, got back up to the lead, pulled a gap and then I tried to tyre manage but by that point, I've, I, I'd worn them so hard through, through getting through Johnny and Jack that, that um, they'd gone off. So the last three laps, I had luckily had enough gap to, to hold it because every time I looked in my mirror, Jack was just a little bit closer. Um, but I mean, Jack and Johnny drove a great race. You know, I think it's the cleanest race we've had all season. So it's really enjoyable. You know, very close, very, very clean. And as, uh, as we got through the first uh, few laps, obviously James pulled off behind. Were you aware then that Tom was right behind you or were you just concentrating on what was happening in front? Oh yeah, it's really hard to, uh, it's really hard to miss a big green, green car coming up in your mirrors. Um, but, you know, when, when Tom was behind me, when we weren't trying to battle, we were pulling away. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't think I'd have a problem with Tom, even though, you know, he's, quick, but he's not, not quite on his pace this weekend. I don't know why. Um, but you know that, that this win goes to my sponsors, SRC Recycling, Chichester Water Sports, and Procure and Wealth Management, and ACC Tyres. Mum, Dad, girlfriend, sister, you know everyone's come together. Um, so yeah, this, this, this is for them, and uh, hopefully we get a couple more this afternoon. Tough race out there, lots going on, and um, uh, and a hot race as well. Uh, but fastest lap. Yeah, it was uh, very hot out there. I mean, uh, the start of the race, I got a brilliant start, 
um, up to P1 and just didn't have the pace at the start. The car wasn't quite coming on. I was waiting for it to come on and then I thought, what of a drive it? You know, I'll let it come on a bit later on. It's a long race. Um, but then I just started dropping places and, you know, I dropped to third and then got a bit of a gap behind me and I thought, right, I can start pushing on. And uh, the car was brilliant second half at race. And like I said, past Johnny, absolutely brilliant racing between me and Johnny. Really close. I wouldn't trust anyone else next to me and, you know, he's the guy to be next to. And uh, yeah, so managed to pick off P2 and nailed P1. John, third place, tough race, lots going on, and for anyone that says, you know, Mazda Racing is close, that's very good evidence of it. Yeah, it's very close. It always has been to me, it's been Mazda, and it's even come on stronger, and then with the field, the talent, what there is in this in this championship, it's just mega, mega, and it's nice to be on that podium again. Um, the last meeting out at Silverstone weren't a, a good one for us, so we wanted something good from Word Girl, so we did good qualifying, and then it's brought us a third, so I were in the lead, but... Can't win them all. <laughs> so here we are as the cars are getting ready to go out for race two in the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup here at Autumn Park. Luke, you expecting to do two from two? Um, yeah, uh, changed the setup a little bit. Um, got into the lead early on in the race, pulled away. Towards the end, Jack, Jack was uh, coming through quick. You know, I think eight tenths of that quick on the second to last lap. So we've had to change the setup a bit. So hopefully, hopefully if I can get a gap, I can be able to maintain it this time. Um, but it is so hot, you know, it's new conditions for us on these tyres because obviously I didn't, I've never raced on these tyres, so we've never raced this hot this year. So, so we'll see, it's sort of a test this session, but yeah, the ultimate goal is to win, yeah. Well, we look forward to speaking to you at the end of the race. Andy, over to you to take us through the rest of the grid. Thanks very much, Lloyd. It's another packed grid, 35 cars. We're hoping to take the start. They start this one in the order in which they finished race one. So it's Herbert and Harding, row one. Greensmith and Murphy, row two. Roach, hopefully he's changed the setup on his car as well to improve his pace. He was only fifth in race one with Ben Short sixth, by Comma seventh and Carl Garnett alongside him. On the fourth row, Sam Tatler and Aidan Hills were in the top ten in race one. Brian Chandler will want to be in the top ten in race two, that's for sure. Alec Livesley and Jeff Gurrier were in the thick of the midfield scrum in race one. That's likely to be the same again. Steve Roberts will want to recover from his lap one off in the first race. Gary Townsend further down than you might have expected as well. He had a grid penalty in race one. And then some of the drivers towards the back who had issues. George Grant there, the series sponsor, on the 15th row of the grid. And keep an eye on James Blake Baldwin, the reigning champion, coming from the back of the grid hopefully now with a healthy car so another 20 minutes of racing around the Alton Park International Circuit it's Luke Herbert and Jack Harding on the front row of the grid the red lights go out away we go and in race one if you remember it was Harding who made the best start of the lot can he replicate it this time from the outside of row one no he has a poor start the car's going nowhere Jack Harding going backwards and he's swamped by the field must have missed a gear it's Herbert from Greensmith the top two with Roach and uh, Liam Murphy dicing over fourth but Jack Harding a disastrous start the initial launch looked good but then I think he missed a gear oh this car spinning in front of the pack oh my Combers off, Ben Shorts off, Aiden Hills as well. Bang, bang into the barriers. A big, big shunt for two of the uh, pre-race favourites for good results. There are more cars on the grass as well. Bits of Master MX-5 in the middle of the road. Oh dear, that is not the way we wanted race number two to start. It's Luke Herbert who snatched the lead. Then Greensmith, Roach and Murphy going with him. But several cars further back, beaten and battered. Let's hope that uh, everyone is able to uh, at least get the cars into a safe position so there's no need for a safety car. And, uh, well, unfortunately, that's what you kept with 35 cars trying to pound their way down towards Cascades. Sam, uh, Carl Garnett's come through in fifth place, by the way. He's had a really good start, picked his way through the carnage beautifully. But Mike Conn was certainly one of the potential frontrunners have been taken out of this one. Uh, Aidan Hills and Ben Short, likewise, were also in the top ten in the first race. They won't be in race two. So, down the hill we go, and oh, Tom Roach is now into second place. Johnny Greensmith, what's happened to him? He, did he miss a gear as well? He drops from second down to fourth, because Roach and Murphy have both gone through. So, Johnny Greensmith there, who was in a good position to attack for the race lead, all of a sudden finds himself with it all to do again, down in fourth position. Up the hill they go for the first time. Luke Herbert, our race one winner, has got himself out in front, but now his big championship rival, Tom Roach, is right with him and bearing down on him, and closing in at a fair rate of knots, it must be said. The slipstream really helping up the hill there, and Tom Tom Roach, well this is the battle, this is the battle of the championship with several of the drivers getting penalties last time out at Silverstone. These are realistically the two drivers who will be fighting for the championship now over the second half of the season and it is Herbert with Roach now right in his wheel tracks. Out of Lodge they go. 
the result from the first race put them pretty much level on points. So it's now sort of uh, equalised itself as we go into the second race of the weekend. And Herbert is really having to defend the race lead now down towards Old Hall Corner. Roach can't get through yet. Look to me, by the way, as though Jack Harding was in sixth place. Roach with a really good run out of Old Hall Corner, though. They've cleared the debris from the track. So it's green flag racing conditions down here again. And Tom Roach is going for the leaders on the outside line down towards Cascades. And no, he can't quite make it stick, but that was really, really brave stuff, that from Roach. He's doing everything he can to try and distract Luke Herbert, and it might just be working, because Luke got two wheels on the dirt. Roach tries to pull alongside, but Greensmith there as well. Three into one, this won't go. And Liam Murphy had to back out of it in third position, so they stay in the same order, with uh, Herbert leading, Roach leading, Murphy leading, Greensmith. That's the order in the top form. Trying, though, desperately to figure out what's going on further back, I think. Yes, Harding is now fifth, ahead of Garnet in sixth, and that looks to me like Brian Chandler running through in seventh place so those have all picked their way through nicely through the Hislop chicane we go back over hilltop again in what's been another dramatic start to this uh, second mx5 super cup race of the day but it looks remarkably as though everyone who was involved in that first lap shunt has been able to continue we believe mike comber is in the pit lane well that's no real surprise after his involvement in the incident but aiden hills remarkably went off with him and ben short they both continued so uh, mike comber possibly the only non-finisher uh, from that uh, that first lap incident so back up clay hill we go again Luke Herbert leading Tom Roach and they're just starting to break away now slightly from Murphy and Greensmith who already have been caught by what I would imagine is a fairly fired up Jack Harding made a good start I can only assume he missed a gear or well, the car wouldn't go in gear uh, and he just got swamped and he's lucky actually to come out of it all still inside the top five Tom Roach though wants the race lead he weaves to the inside to the outside to the inside back to the outside again he'll now try and square up the corner get a good run out onto the pit straight just gets a bit a bit wide there as they go through the corner though but he has got a good run he's in the slipstream Herbert knows it goes defensive immediately and Roach will try to draw alongside to the outside now back to the inside again is there room is there room no not quite back to the outside again he's covering many more miles than anyone else is out there Tom Roach in his desperate attempts to get the race lead away from Luke Herbert but he still can't do it Luke is just about hanging on but what terrific racing this is all five of them now absolutely together at great speed down towards Cascades through the long left hander they go they uh, head out onto the long lakeside straight really important to get a good run out of that uh, Cascades corner because it leads on to the longest straight on the track They're all fairly equal through there Liam Murphy now starting to look a bit toey as he tries to find a way past Roach for second that's not what Roach needs he needs to be allowed here to uh, give his full attention to attacking Luke Herbert for the race lead but the trouble is when you're in a long queue of cars like this you want to attack, you want to try and find a way past the car in front of you, but you know that if you go for a move that doesn't work, you'll lose momentum and more than likely lose more than one position. So it's really important that if you go for a move, you're fairly certain it's going to pay off. Otherwise, it could backfire. Back over the hill they go. There's Carl Garner having another terrific run in sixth position. Back down towards his lobs. Anyone going to make a move here? It is single file as they hit the brakes, but just as close as ever. Tom Roach's car makes its way through. Through the right-hander at Nickerbrook corner, back up and over the hill, avoid that tyre stack. Oh dear, and behind there is drama because Ben Short is off for the second time in this race. Well, he was off on the first lap, if you remember, at Cascades. He's now spun again at his lops. He was tangled with another car, which I have to say I didn't quite catch, but uh, he has rejoined. Let's hope the other uh, vehicle uh, does likewise. But Ben Short, well and truly in the thick of the action here, isn't he? Up and over Deer's Leap they go again and in towards Old Hall Corner where the race is going to continue like this I think for much of the rest of the way. Join us after the break to see whether Luke Herbert can hang on for his second win of the day. Hello and welcome back to Alton Park. Race number two here at uh, the Cheshire Circuit, well and truly underway for the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup. It's been a very dramatic start, particularly for Ben Short, who's been off twice. Uh, we've been told now the driver he tangled with latest down at the uh, Hislop chicane was Alec Liversley, who was having what was on for his best resort of the year. But unfortunately, those two have tangled and dropped towards the back of the field. This, though, is the leading quintet of cars, and it is Luke Herbert from Tom Roach, from Liam Murphy, Johnny Greensmith and Jack Harding five of the traditional front runners in the field and they've got themselves together again now it's all just calmed down a little bit more in the middle portion of the race but you sense that getting into the final stages now things might start to change Tom Roach there desperate to try and find a way ahead of Luke Herbert 
he comes into this race, does Tom Roach, having led the championship arriving here, he uh, now comes into this race uh, with, we reckon, a very slender championship lead, but they're more or less level on points here, Luke. And so for the remainder of this weekend and the rest of the season, indeed, the second half of the season, it's going to be fascinating to watch those two do battle. But as we can see, there are so many other drivers who can get themselves in between them and start uh, really affecting this championship outcome. So it's going to be a really intriguing second half of the year in 2017. It's never a dull moment in the MX-5 Super Cup, is there? And when the championship battle is as hotly contested as it is this season, you can expect the drama to continue right the way down to the final lap of the year. Likewise, I think the drama is going to continue down to the final lap of this race. Race number two at Alton Park. The first race was won by well under a second by Luke Herbert over Jack Harding. Well, this time Jack Harding's all the way down in fifth after that uh, pretty poor start he made. Down towards the left-hander at Cascades, a bit of uh, bodywork uh, trailing from the back of his car as well, the rear bumper just flapping a bit loose in the wind after a bit of contact with somebody or something, that's when he's caught one of the tyre stacks at the chicanes, down towards Ireland we go and Greensmith there trying now to find a way past Liam Murphy but it's not really proving all that easy is it? Liam having what is probably his strongest weekend of the season so far really he's third place in the championship but that's all been through consistent results rather than anything else and now this is a recovering Alec Livesey tried to get the inside of a recovering Aidan Hills Aidan Hills car is looking very worse for wear after his incident just here at the avenue uh, on the first lap of the race when he was uh, involved with Mike Comber and Ben Short who we believe made contact but those two are recovering nicely at the order actually and there is a chance that they could get somewhere possibly near the top 20 We'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile, the leading quintet making their way back out of Druids. And Liam Murphy is now no longer really attacking Tom Roach for second. Instead, he's defending his third position. And that's allowing the top two to escape. Means it takes a nice wide line into Lodge, trying to cut back and uh, get the late apex and get the run across the start finish line. Herbert and Roach still leading the way. But the battle is well and truly on for third place now as we go on to the final lap of the race. Murphy on the inside line. That leaves the outside for Johnny Greensmith. We can't really go right round the outside for Old Hall. There is Carl Garnett, still running a solid sixth position and then the gap back to uh, everybody else running in seventh there is Steve Roberts he's really had the pace this weekend but that off he had on lap one of race one has uh, cost him dear uh, then everybody else filing in behind that was James Blake Baldwin and the, the reason I paused was because I couldn't quite believe that Baldwin has come all the way through from 35th on the grid to be running eighth place going on to the final lap that is brilliant there goes Nathan Bell in the red number 11 car one of the blink mode sport cars as well running well Brian Chandler here we're seeing, battling with Nick Dunn. This has been a race-long dice, actually, as Brian has been up and down the order a bit uh, like a yo-yo all race, but he's now just got himself back in front of Nick Dunn, and that is the 10th place. There is James Blake Baldwin, yes, with Sam Tatler uh, behind him. So Blake Baldwin in eight. That's about as high as he's going to get, I think, but at least that gives him a decent grid position for the third race. They will start that race where they finish this one. There's Gary Townsend. He had a, a five-place grid penalty uh, for driving standards issue in the uh, first race so uh, that set him back a little way but uh, was still able to finish 21st but he's really moved his way up the order nicely that in behind him is the number 23 car Adam Bessel they're dicing over 14th place now with half a lap to go and over the hill they go and on to the Hislop chicane for the final time but already through that part of the circuit and up towards Druids are the leading two Nothing likely to change there, I don't think, between Herbert and Roach, but for third place, it could go any one of three ways, couldn't it? Murphy, Greensmith and Harding, all absolute together, and Greensmith is right with Murphy again, coming out of the corner. He'll go to the inside, but so too will Murphy to defend. Harding, therefore, goes to the outside and tries to get a run on the pair of them. How is this one going to settle out on the run to the flag? We'll have to wait and see. Harding, it looks to me, has had a really good run out of the corner, tries to draw himself alongside Johnny Greensmith. Luke Herbert is going to take two wins from two here at Alton Park. Tom Roach is second. Third is Murphy. And fourth is Jack Harding. Harding did it. He got past Johnny Greensmith on the run to the flag. Johnny will be a bit frustrated with that. He gets demoted down to fifth position at the end. Um with Carl Garner coming through I think in sixth but it's a brilliant win for Luke Herbert two from two and that will now put him clearly into the championship lead Herbert from Roach from Murphy Harding and Greaves with the top five with Garnet Steve Roberts with a great recovery drive to seventh likewise James Blake Baldwin to eighth ahead of Sam Tatler and Brian Chandler who's inside the top ten outside the top ten Gary Townsend recovered up into 14th place Ben Short 16th despite two off track excursions George Grant there in 21st place there were a few more retirements this time unfortunately Will Sharp uh, having had 
had a good result in his first ever race in race one. He was a non-finisher. So too were Jake Bailey, Alex King, Jeremy Crook, Mike Comber and Andy Coombs. Luke, two out of two, congratulations, but that was a tough race. You were being pushed by Tom pretty much from the start. Yeah, um, I just knew if I can get in front, then um, Alton is quite an easy track to defend if, if you put your car in the right place. And um, it, it was apparent that, that Tom was a little bit down on power because he was in my slipstream. He wasn't gaining any, any, any track unless he was right on my bumper. So as long as I could get to the apex first, it was just a case of, you know, I knew to Tom wouldn't be able to out-drag me down the straight because, you know, in these Mazas, that's how you have to overtake. Um, so yes, yeah, so it was a comfortable win. Um, so hopefully for the third one we can we can give it another crack. But this time we've got Tom Tom on the front row. I mean, uh, you know, I think he's uh, he's edging for a win now. So I don't think it'll be as easy in the last one. Tom, fantastic start and second coming into uh, coming into the end of the third lap it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, good first lap. Um, everything kind of worked out. Um, I think Johnny missed a gear and uh, he kind of everybody went all over the place and I managed to get through to second. Car was loads better then. I um, was really struggling with it overheating in the first race, so I couldn't follow anyone. Um, still not quite got the power of some of them, it didn't seem today. I don't know if it's the heat or something, but um, uh, Luke, Luke drove really well. He put his car in the right place at, at the right time all the time, so unless he made a mistake, there was, there was no way past. Liam, congratulations on third place, but that was tough towards the end. Yeah, very tough. Like I say, um, Johnny was definitely coming if I'd, um, well, one little mistake, I mean, straight and dirty, get my brakes right and everything, so... Yeah, we're happy with that, but like I say, a few changes for the last race as it was pretty shocking near the end there. Will you join us here as the cars are lining up, ready to go out for race three in the Mazda Super Cup? Luke Harris trying to make it three out of three. Tom Roach, though, is really going to be on his heels as they come into the first corner. Tom, this is a really difficult situation for you to be in. Yeah, it's better than it has been all day. <laughs> At least there's some clear air in front. And, uh, yeah, so I think it's... Uh, the start's obviously going to be really important in the first few laps because, um, yeah, it's definitely an advantage to be in the lead. Um, so, we'll see what happens. Luke, this is going to be tough coming into the first corner, surely. Yeah, I see that uh, Tom's uh, changed his exhaust to a, to a go-per form, which is what we've put on this weekend. It's given us a little edge, so it would be interesting to see if uh, Tom's found some a little bit more power. Um, obviously not good for me, but it make it closer racing, won't it? So... Yeah, it's going to be tough out there. Looking forward to seeing what happens. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tight into the first corner. And it's over to Andy to take you through the rest of the grid. Well, I'm really looking forward to this one. The top two in the championship sharing the front row of the grid. Remember, they start this one how they finished race two. So it's Herbert and Roach row one. Murphy and Harding, though, they will be a factor as well. So too will Johnny Greensmith and possibly even Carl Garnett. Steve Roberts and James Blake Baldwin, they should move forward straight into the thick of the action as well. With Sam Tatler and Brian Chandler on the fifth row. Nick Dunn, Nathan Bell next up. Then Adam Bessel and Gary Townsend with David Henderson and Jeff Gurrier on the eighth row of the grid. Darren Stapleton doing well there on row nine alongside Mark Home, both relatively new to the series. Aidan Hills uh, with hopefully a repaired car now ahead of George Grant. Ben Short was given a five uh, position penalty for the contact with Mike Comber that triggered the incident at the start of race number one. So that's why he's a bit further down the order. Alex King was also given a five position penalty after an incident in race one. So... Here we go. For the third time of asking on what has been a very long and very hot day here at Alton Park, we have the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup cars ready and raring to go. Luke Herbert on the inside, Tom Roach on the outside. The lights go out. Now away we go. And who gets the run towards Old Hall Corner? It looks to me like Herbert's got his nose in front. It's another good start from Jack Harding, though. He's going around the outside of Roach. No, ducks back into the line, tries to go the inside instead. That won't work either. So single file for the top three, but it is indeed a good start from Harding. He's leapfrog Liam Murphy, who's down to fourth. Oh, dear, but contact view car sliding wide let's hope they all keep it going how on earth did they all keep pointed in the right direction then ah no there are green flags which tells me that someone might be off the road but as they make their way down towards the uh, left hander of cascades yes there is a car rejoining just to the uh, right of the uh, uh, picture and a car in the wall which is number seven alex miller unfortunately so yes there was drama in old hall i didn't think they'd all keep it going and alex miller's car is looking very worse for wear so too is the tire wall as well so i suspect that might require a safety car down towards the shell hairpin we go and it is herbert Roach, Harding, Murphy and Greens with the top five again. Steve Roberts is there in sixth. I think that is James Blake Baldwin behind him in seventh. Yes, it is. And Brian Chandler eighth. Carl Garnett ninth. And Gary Townsend in the top ten for the first time today. Ahead of Sam Tatler in uh, 11th place. This is the five for 13th place. Nathan Bell on the red car. And the number 17 is Nick Dunn, who will have to settle in behind him. They're both just in behind Adam Bessel in the white number 23. Aidan Hills behind them, the orange and Brady car. So, down towards his lops. Roach peeking to the inside. Interesting to hear that Luke Herbert, no 
notice that uh, Roger made quite a few significant adjustments to that car um, before this set, uh, third race of the day to try and improve his straight line speed. Well, any straight line speed advantage you can get in uh, Master MX-5 racing will be a big, big help because cars are so evenly matched and uh, we already know the effect the slipstream has. So having a straight line speed edge will certainly make overtaking a bit easier. Might make Luke Herbert's job a little bit tougher at the front of the field. And Roach is certainly all over him now as they go in towards Druids for the first time. Look at that, always pushing him through the fastest corner on the track and he mounted to find a gap at the inside, has he? Oh, yes, maybe. He was trying to get through, but I think Herbert got the door closed. Meanwhile, Alex Miller's car is being dealt with by the marshals. Yes, Herbert did hang on to the race lead, but behind there was a move being made. I think that was Blake Baldwin up the inside of Roberts. Yes, it was. Out onto the gravel goes Brian Chandler. He'll lose several positions as a result. It's all kicked off again in the midfield, hasn't it? Up and over the start-finish line they go. Blake Baldwin and Roberts are still side by side. And in fact, Roberts on the outside line into the yellow flag zone will just about hang on. So no safety car, but yellow flags out at, at uh, Old Hall Corner. Master Marshall's deal with the incident. The racing at the front, though, as close as ever. Welcome back to the Master MX-5 Super Cup here at Alton Park and that is a very smoky Brian Chandler who will be heading into the pit lane. Now I thought at first that might be bodywork uh, rubbing but it isn't is it? That's a fairly catastrophic engine failure. So Brian Chandler's eventful day comes to a, an eventful end. Meanwhile this is the fight for the race lead. Speaking of eventful, Luke Herbert and Tom Roach have got themselves together again at the front of the field with uh, Jack Harding in third as it was off the line. Liam Murphy is in fourth position then Greensmith and Blake Baldwin with Steve Roberts, the car just a little bit detached from this train. He'll be hoping to see them all start to trip over each other soon. That will allow him to close in. In fact, I tell, I tell a lie, actually, it's Roberts who's up in fifth place, Blake Baldwin down in seventh. So James Blake Baldwin's had a moment somewhere and has dropped down the order. Through Nick and Brooke come the leaders. And Blake Baldwin already, I think, starting to bridge the gap slightly and close back in onto the, uh, the leading contenders. Over Clay Hill they go. Top three just breaking away slightly there from Murphy, who didn't get a great one out of the corner. But with the effect of the toe, he should be able to hopefully to close back in. Ooh, Jack Harding. Oh, a really good run initially through Druids, but a bit too good maybe. Ran out of road and got two wheels onto the dirt. That will kill his momentum down this lodge corner where there is a slippery surface flag down. That's not putting off uh, Steve Roberts, though, who dives on the inside of Liam Murphy. That was a really nice move. Has he been able to cover it on the exit of the corner? Meanwhile, Tom Roach and Luke Herbert almost come together over the top of the hill there as Luke Herbert was so eager to get over to the inside line to defend. Meanwhile, Liam Murphy's coming back on the inside of Steve Roberts. How's that one going to work itself out? It is still so by side, Roberts gets elbowed out wide and Johnny Greensmith says, let me join in too he gets up the inside of the pair of them and might gain two places, down towards the left hander they go, he's on the outside line but he does it, brilliant stuff that from Johnny Greensmith and he is through into fourth place, two places gained and that was showed his experience there uh, because he saw that situation developing in front of him, he just sat back a little bit, let them get on with it when they, all, when they drove into each other and ran each other off the road he was there to pick up the pieces and he's straight through into fourth place, Murphy down to fifth Robert's sixth, and that has indeed now brought Blake Baldwin back into play in seven for the race lead. It is now the three usual suspects, really. We've seen these three at the front field so many times this year, with Luke Herbert, Tom Roach, and Jack Harding still absolutely together. Through Britain's comes the second group of cars now, who, with their squabbling, have really dropped back some way. As we now move into the second half of this third and final race of the day, temperatures into the low 30s at some points today. It's not really cooled down at all. There's no breeze, and of course, in the cars, it's very hot uh, work indeed, anyway. And three 20 minute races that's an hour's worth of racing. When the racing is this close, it feels like about three hours worth of racing. Uh, and in these baking hot conditions, the drivers really have been um, exemplary, really, putting on a great show and uh, shows the level of fitness required to race at any level, not just up at the, uh, the higher levels, Formula 1, etc. If you're going to step into any sort of racing car in these conditions, you need to be physically fit. Down towards Lodge Corner come the leading three. Jack Harding this time pops out of line to the outside. Can't quite make that stick, but again, a bit of a tap in the tail there. Gives Tom Roach a bit of a headbutt through the corner, but that won't bother Tom. It just spurs him on to go even quicker. Up and over the hill they go, and... 
Is Jack going to try and make another move, maybe, in towards Old Hall Corner? Roach certainly is expecting it, and there it is. There's a gap up the inside. Harding goes for second place. He's gone through. Well, I thought Roach covered that one, but uh, Jack Harding, from a little distance back, just about found the gap, got the car stopped on the apex, and he's gone through. So Harding now into second place. Roach down into third. Can Jack Harding now go after Luke Herbert? What these two really need to do is try and work together so as not to drop any further back from the race leader. But working together is something that in principle works, but in practice the drivers aren't all that keen to do sometimes. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Down into Shell. No change behind them, still uh, the same order with Greensmith in fourth, but of course he's now right back with them. He's brought his friends too, Liam Murphy, Steve Roberts and James Blake Baldwin back with them again. Although James once more is starting to drop off the tail of this group. It seems like he catches when they start fighting, but when they're all running single file, doesn't quite have the pace to run with them. Just getting used to that car that he's not been driving through the first part of the season. Well, Luke Herbert had a handy little advantage at the start of the lap, didn't he? But Jack Harding doing everything he can to go with him. He certainly closed the gap significantly through the far side of the circuit. As they arrive back down at his lobs, he's less than a car length behind again. So shows just how difficult it is to build any sort of a gap in a uh, Master MX-5 racing. Especially these uh, Super Cup cars, a bit bigger than the Mark 1 machines. They punch a bigger hole in the air. That generates a bigger slipstream effect and makes it really, really tough to break away. So they're all back together as they have been for much of the day, really. Through Druids, hopping over the curbs there. Jack Harding has become one of the most spectacular drivers to watch in the uh, championship, hasn't he? But he's making this very spectacular style work pretty well for him. Reminds me a lot, actually, of uh, JJ Clements, who was uh, a former race winner in the championship a couple of years ago. It was always sideways, all over the curbs. Not very spectacular, but usually it isn't all that quick. Well, Jack Harding seems to have adopted that driving style, but he's making it very quick, and he's closed right onto the tail now of Luke Herbert. This is where he got past Roach a lap ago. I thought for a moment he might try a repeated manoeuvre at the inside of Luke Herbert but he decided he was too far back, Luke a bit later on the brakes maybe than Tom had been a lap ago oh running wide further back was Blake Baldwin so he's certainly pushing on isn't he Luke Herbert now having to defend the lead and this is going to start stacking everyone up again and it's one of those pressure cooker races isn't it, everyone's so close together they've been up on top of each other pretty much every lap of every race so far today and something has to give eventually someone will go for a move and it will spark off all sorts of uh, action you sense maybe that it's Jack Harding in this race he might be the one to make that move he made a brilliant move on Tom Roach lap or so ago at Old Hall Corner will he be able to find a way past Luke Herbert though no one's really been able to do it all day with the exception of the first half of race one Luke has led pretty much every lap Back up towards Old Hall Corner, we come again on to the final lap of the race. And well, Jack Harding now is defending from Tom Roach, just falling back from the race leader. Roach is up the inside into Old Hall, but he was too far back. Harding a bit sideways on the exit of the corner, further back meanwhile. There we get a, a glimpse of David Henderson for the first time this weekend. Jeff Gurrier in behind him. And then, uh, chasing after Nathan Bell in the red number 11 car. Got Nick Dunn there as well, two of the Paul Sheard cars together. Nick Dunn uh, in his... Sorry, Mark Holmes, not Nick Dunn in his second meeting of uh, MX5 racing. Back through Ireland Ben come the race leaders though. Half a lap still to go. And once more, Luke Herbert has pulled the pin just when he needed to. He's built a nice little advantage now over Jack Harding in second. And it looks like that is where the battle is going to be. Can Jack hang on to second place? Tom Roach, if things finished as they were now, would leave Alton Park four points behind Luke Herbert, having arrived here eight points ahead. So it's not been a great weekend, really, up north for Tom Roach. And if he could get past Jack Harding, he would at least minimise the damage to just a, a two-point deficit. Down towards his lops we go again. Avoiding the curve there was Johnny Greensmith, trying to keep it nice and neat and tidy as he tries now to hang on to a position inside the top five. He's got Liam Murphy and Steve Roberts behind him, though, trying to take that position away from him. Up and over Clay Hill again. Top three breaking away. Not Roach, not really breathing down Jack Harding's neck, is he? In towards Drew. It's two quarters to go. Now, this is where you need to get a good run out of this corner and possibly get close enough to attack down into Lodge. We've seen Harding has been quick through Druids all day. And although Roach is closing in the slipstream, I'm not really sure he's close enough. Jinx to the inside to try and distract Harding. But no, he's not close enough to throw it up the inside. In fact, Harding was closing. 
him back in there on Luke Herbert. But Luke Herbert is about to join a very elite club. We reckon only four drivers before have won three races in a weekend. Luke Herbert adds his name to that list. He takes three wins here at Alton Park. Jack Harding is second. Tom Roach is third and will lose the championship lead. Uh, but at least there will only be four points between them. So the battle is going to continue on to the next round. That's for sure. Johnny Greensmith is next in line with Liam Murphy, fifth. Steve Roberts finally gets a decent result in sixth with James Blake Baldwin, seventh. And the rest of them filing in behind. But Luke Herbert, a cracking weekend he has had here at Alton Park. And he takes the third race win of the day. So here is the official results then. Luke Herbert joins a very elite list. Mike Comber, Abby Eaton... Alan Henderson and Paul Sheard, the only other four drivers to have won three races in a weekend. And Luke now is the fifth driver to do so. And that will give him the championship lead. Outside the top ten, we see Gary Townsend worked his way into 11th in the end. Mike Comber, uh, 14th. That's a good result after his race two difficulties. Uh, further back, uh, unfortunately, we did lose a few in that race. Alex King and uh, Jake Bailey both failed to get to the finish. Uh, also, of course, Brian Chandler, we saw pull into the pit lane. Duncan Harris, also a non-finisher. Alex Miller and William Sharp, unfortunately, his uh, debut weekend not going entirely to plan in the end. So Luke Herbert then moves into the championship lead. It's looking increasingly like it's going to be a battle between he and Tom Roach. And if that is the case, we've set the scene beautifully with their battling here today. There you have confirmation, just four points between them. Liam Murphy and Johnny Greensmith, though, fairly close for third position. And Brian Chandler, despite his issues, does still hang on to a top five uh, championship standings, whilst Jack Harding is now back inside the top ten. Luke, three from three. You've got to be happy with that. You can't do any better. No, but first pole in, in uh, qualifying, uh, first win in race one, and then and then went on to win, win all three. It's, you know, the car's been fantastic. Made a few changes to set up for that last one, and, uh, yeah, the car came on early, stayed on. Um, and it, I think I was in an easier position than Tom because, you know, he had to defend and attack, and all I've got to do is defend, and, uh, you know, it makes it hard work, and then Jack had a gun. He was in the same position, so... Um, like I said earlier, you know, it's, it is hard to get past here because it is a narrow track, even there's lots of outbreaking points. So, no, it's really good. Really, really happy with the weekend. Uh, just got a nice six hour drive home now. So. <laughs> Jack, congratulations on your second place. That was a fantastic move there on Tom in the, into the first corner, a few laps in. Yeah, yeah. I um, got into second early on, and then, uh, like I said, Luke was just defending and it was just slapped backwards and forwards. And like, it's hard to attack when you're having to defend at the same time. And then Tom did a really good move on me up through Druids, got me inside, didn't expect it all. And I was like, right, I worked with Tom. Um, and I pushed him for about three, four laps, trying everything to get past Luke. And then I thought, right, I'll have a go now. So uh, yeah, passed him into turn one, quite a good move. And then, uh, yeah, just, it's so hard. We, we catch up Luke so quick, can't do anything with it though. Tom, that was a tough race, but uh, a hard fought third place. Yeah, it was really tough. Um, car felt great, you know, but uh, it's always it's so difficult to overtake around here and Luke was defending so well. Um, and it's difficult when you're in second because you can't really attack first because then you're going to lose and that's what ended up happening. And Jack did a really good move on my first corner and got past and then I thought maybe he could have a go at Luke, but yeah, Luke's driven really well all weekend, so uh, well deserved. Congratulations on both your podiums today. We look forward to seeing you next time out. Thanks. So there we go. Fantastic racing here at Alden Park this weekend. We look forward to seeing you next time when the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup comes from Snetterton.